program, this team, what he's done here to create this kind of atmosphere and to have a game of uh, this magnitude in Lexington, Kentucky, says that you know, the SEC is a tough place to play and that, uh, some good coaches in this league. And I've gotten to know Mark over the years, and this group of seniors he has is really tremendous, and they play really hard. Um, our kids continue to be resilient. I will say again, as I said many times, we are a work in progress. We make things extremely difficult at times. Um, but they just keep playing and they keep playing physical. Uh, a lot of credit goes to our offensive line today. To rush for 331 yards against anybody in the SEC is pretty tremendous. And our backs and tight ends did a big part of that, as well as the receivers blocking. Um, and defensively, we, we felt like we had to stop the run early. We did that. We probably didn't finish the game like we wanted to. We got a little conservative, but uh, we give them credit they made some plays. But our kids play hard. We play really hard on special teams. Special teams are always a big part of the game, but when you lose players within a game and you're able to answer the bell and put other guys in, and Trey Hill grew up today, you know, Kendall Baker played a lot, continue to plug and play guys, and, it, and it's shown that the depth is critical to our success on the offensive line. For me, I know some people might have viewed this as an afterthought, but what does it mean to you to win another SEC East? It's huge. Uh, you know, it's not been easy, it's never easy. People, I think, sometimes get spoiled when we win. And uh, these are good programs. These are good teams. And uh, I give our kids a lot of credit because the backs were against the wall kind of two weeks in a row. And they came out fighting. They came out scratching and clawing. I thought the, the play by Miko was starting to pump return. was a huge momentum play in the game and, and uh, set the tone for the rest of the game. I'm uh, really interested in Trey Hill, obviously, uh, other than the uh, high snap. Uh, it looked like you guys didn't lose a beat in the run game, and I, it seemed like the emphasis on this game period was like we're going to establish a run. We're able to do that. Yeah, we always want to establish a run. I think every team wants to establish the run, and sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. We didn't know how well we'd be able to block them. They're they're massive up front. They're really big. Uh, they got good outside backers, but we were able to lean on them. But the backs really ran well. Trey, I mean, to be honest with you, there was times this year in fall camp we thought Trey might be a starter. At least you know, I did. And uh, we, we, we kind of tossed the idea around a lot of times, but he's just continued to work. You know, a lot of these freshmen that are on our team that are highly regarded, talented players, they just keep working and they, they take on their roles, just like Dustin, just like all the other guys. I don't know, Adam Anderson played more, like Channing Tindall played, Otis Reese played. I mean, these guys are taking on their roles and growing as players, but Trey did that. The neat thing about Trey is he took, he took snaps at defense a lot this week. So. He ends up playing all offensive line. Chris Swift and Ford were both at career highs tonight. Just what's the biggest way that each of those guys has kind of grown up over the course of the season? I mean, they've always been good players, guys. I mean, I'm not going to say the maturation that they played better tonight because they played before. They had good open holes. They ran hard. Receivers blocked well. They uh, they continue to run hard. They're very confident in the group in front of them. I thought Coach Chaney had a good plan against what was a really good defense. I mean, teams struggle to score against them mainly because of their experience. They have veterans in the back end. They don't make a lot of mistakes. So you got to grind out points. And you know, as we, we grind them out. We grind out a lot of threes where we should be scoring touchdowns. Did Swift you know Swift was going to be that explosive today? I know he'd been slowed a little bit by some different things. I, I mean, Swift's always explosive. He broke out some runs that maybe they missed it. The runs that were usually 15, 20 went for longer, obviously. But it's not like we don't see him do that a lot in practice. Kirby, you had to get around Josh Allen. He's given all kinds of recognition this year. Talk, talk about the challenge it was to uh, both of those two and to uh, neutralize the game. Right you know, I really thought our kids had a chip on their shoulder. You know, Andrew Thomas uh, he plays his best when he plays the best. And Andrew loves that challenge. Isaiah's the same way. I can't sit here and tell you who he matched up on more. I just can tell you that those guys get a chip on their shoulder when they get a chance to go against the leading sack guy in the SEC. And they, they take pride in that. And uh, our offensive line has a lot of pride in protecting the quarterback. I thought they did a good job of doing that today. After their field goal drive, did you feel the momentum flip from you guys more sounding like a 15 play drive, everybody touched the ball? Was that the, you can't script the drive much better than that in response? Would that, would that be what you say? Uh, well, you said it. I wouldn't say I said it, but I, I think there was a lot of momentum plays in the game. We kept bouncing back. And, um, the, you know, I thought one of the momentum plays in the game was the fumble up for the half, but trying to not let that deflate us because we had run the ball well. When you look at it, you got two turnovers. I don't know if they were both in the red area, but they were in high red or out of the margin where we thought we could get points. And that's what's frustrating. It's, 
how can we clean this up? How can we clean up the goal line situations? Because those are going to come back to haunt you if you don't clean those up. And that's what we got to get better at. Um, I think a lot of people will look at the score and say this, this game wasn't that difficult to win, but the score is not always indicative of how challenging the game is. Uh, speak to that point in regards to how challenging this game was, despite what this game Yeah, every game's challenging to me. I mean, look at the games within reach all the time. I mean, there were times there that we, we could have separated. I mean, 28 10, and we got a chance to separate. I mean, Something happens. I mean, there's there's several things, but they kept fighting, kept battling. They got an explosive uh, offense. Um, in terms of the defense, Jonathan talked about you know how how they had heard all the noise about Benny Snell and his offense, and um, just like in terms of the, of the success and stopping the run. I mean, how does it make you feel as a coach after having the concerns about? I'm happy for them. It's not for me, it's for them. I mean, they're the ones that do the work in. They sweat, they do all the hitting, they go against everybody, they get called out all the time. Can't stop the run, can't do this. I love it. I mean, it's motivation for the power players. So um, they did a good job. We still had some holes in the run game. I mean, they ran the ball. Not as, I mean, I was happy with our run defense, but we still didn't stop the run at the level we need to to be um, a better team. And we got to continue to grow. Ben Better leads that group. He takes a, a personal challenge to lead them each week. And, we keep getting guys better at that position. We're just running out of men at that position. You heard yeah, you said you, you still work in progress, but you finished last week's game really strong. You played well today, obviously. Do you think you guys could be sort of ascending at the right time? I think we're getting better. Ascending is a strong word. We're getting better. We just got so many things to get better at. We, we, I hate to say it, but we left, we left opportunities out there in this game. And I know you're never going to play a perfect game. I just wish we could play a prettier game. And uh, we've got some guys that got to grow up. You know, defensively, we're in a we're in a tough situation where we got some young, new players that are still learning. And we, we said this game because of the athleticism of the quarterback, we got to put them out there. And I thought Channing and, and Adam answered the bell. We got to get those guys ready to play. They're they're, they're fast. Um, and we got to continue to get Otis and some of those young players better, like Jordan. You know. How are uh, Lamont and Cole? Are there any other? Injuries? I think Nicole's going to be fine. He probably could have came back. I don't know Lamont. Um, it was like a hyperextended knee. We don't know. We'll see if he swells tomorrow. See what's going on with him. But he, he, he could walk. He just couldn't bear a lot of weight. So once again, we'll have to figure out the best group. You mentioned UK leaning on experience. Do you think this is a situation you can see them, you know, the next couple of years? You know, they sustain it, and you're all kind of fighting back and forth again for the East, or is it? To I always can say that. I think they've got a great coaching staff. I got a lot of respect for Eddie Grant. He's one of the most physical offensive coordinators in the league. He believes in running the ball and being tough and physical. Their defense coordinator does a tremendous job. And if they continue to recruit at a high level, they'll, they'll, they'll do well. They get a lot of really good football players in here out of Ohio. What was the Cade, Cade Mays injury? And also, if you could talk uh, about the decision to play Justin Fields, critical opportunities for a young guy that hadn't been on the road much. Well, with Cade, he got a, a, a Barner Stinger and uh, Wait for a strength to come back. He's had it before, um, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll never reinsert it. But um, probably will be okay. Um, but um, Justin, you know, I told our guys that here's a guy didn't let snap last week. You didn't see anything out of him. All he did was come out and work this week. I thought he had his best practice of the year on Tuesday, and he had a good practice on Wednesday. And I told him, I said, man, this guy's practicing, buying in, and he's positive, cheering on the sideline, and. And he goes in and plays well. I, I just, I wish we could get to the point where you play him a little more because he's getting better. And he does good things, and he doesn't have to just run the ball. Um, those situations today dictated that, and he did a great job doing it. Is Jordan Davis playing better than you thought he would when y'all came in the year? It seems like he's really come on these last. Yeah, I can't say today. I, I would love to watch him, but yes, he's playing better at least through the Florida game than I ever thought. I, mean, I didn't know the guy. I didn't think I would play. And. Uh, you know, a lot of our coaches on our staff said, don't don't give up on this guy yet. Let's, let's travel him. Let's take him. We didn't take him early on. That's probably a mistake because he didn't grow until we just said, got playing. You know, we played him in some, some mop-up duty early in the season, but I didn't see this until he lost some weight. And uh, he's, I don't, I don't want to speak out of turn because I didn't see him take, but he's been playing well. You said Leather is kind of the leader of the defense, so to speak. Where does he? Defensive line, definitely. Defensive line. His, his arc. But my time with him started about 10th grade. He committed to Alabama with me and then broke off and came to Georgia. So he's, 
he and I have had a long-standing relationship. <laughs> I know his brother well. I know his parents well. And we all know what he's been through at the University of Georgia. And you know what the guy does? He, he sells out for Georgia. He goes out to practice every day, and he plays really hard. He goes in the game, and he plays really hard and really physical. He's bought in to helping his team, and he's not afraid to stand up and confront the man in that D-line room, which is what we need. Kirby, you said this when the East had nothing to do with the compared to when he had nothing to I don't know. I, I felt like last year it was it was easier maybe with the experience we had, the veteran kids we had, the games seemed a little easier. Um, it's, it's been a tough road because you can make it about expectations, which nobody at Georgia runs from. You can make it about uh, maybe the other teams getting better around us, which is going to happen. Um, and we're, we're a young team. I mean, we got some good seniors, but for the most part, when you look out there and you do walkthroughs and you do these meetings and you see – Freshmen and sophomores, it's, it's not exactly heartwarming to know they're going to go into an environment they haven't played in, and they got to grow up and play. But does that speak to the upside this team has? I think it does. I, I just want the upside to, to, to come along about faster. I just want to get better and faster, and I want them to grow faster. And, uh, playing these young guys is going to have to pay off for us in the long run. Talk about playing with the young guys with Channing and, and Brendan both have huge plays very early in this game, a couple of sacks. I mean, what, do you, what, is it, what does it do for a player like that to make those kind of plays in game situations? Builds confidence. I mean, Channing Tindall needs confidence. I'm telling you, a guy's fast, he's athletic, he just needs confidence. He's been playing well on special teams. Uh, same thing with uh, Adam Anderson. He's, he's got to gain some weight, he's got to get bigger. But Otis was, is a big physical guy that's, that, that has a presence. There's just a lot of young players. But look, guys, there's guys all over that field. Jason Stanley today makes plays, and all he's done is contribute to special teams. Jason Stanley makes a huge play in the game. Justin Fields, huge play in the game. I mean, I can't go over and over and over the guys that maybe didn't play a role last week that had a huge role in this game. Trey Hill, I mean, it's just they buy into the team effort. When you buy into the team and you believe in Georgia, it makes you successful. DeAndre and Elijah both go over 100 yards. How do their two styles kind of complement each other? I don't think there's a whole lot of difference in their styles. I mean, I know one's a slasher and one's a bruiser, but they're both really good vision, good backs. They run hard. Best thing they do is protect the ball, good ball security. we got to continue to do that. Two more questions? Yeah, three freshmen and two sophomores out there in the offensive line at one point. Any nervousness about that? Three freshmen. Isaiah, you're counting? Or I'm counting Isaiah as a freshman. freshman. And then Cade, and then Trey, oh. and then the two sophomores, Andrew and Solomon. Great Solomon. Solomon. Great. <laughs> <laughs> they play hard. They, 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 they continue to compete. The good thing is we need more guys like that because we've got a little hole in our offensive line in the older group. The younger group is talented. But we have to go out and recruit well because we know what's coming. I mean, some of these guys are really good players. Who knows what's going to happen next year? We've got to find tackles, and these guys get to play. I mean, it's probably the most injured position in our conference as far as bumps, bruises, things. You're going to get to plug and play. And Sam's done a great job of having Kendall Baker ready to all play all his positions. I mean, Ben Cleveland, still not back yet, not ready to go, but here's a guy that's going to um, be able to help us when he gets back healthy. So it makes me nervous they're out there, but I also like having good players out there. You know you're going to Atlanta. Any concerns about you got another one to play, a big game with Auburn, a rival game? I mean, with Auburn, when it comes to Auburn, you know how that goes. I mean, they, they don't like us, and we get it. And they got a really good football team. And be at home, and uh, our guys – you know, we respect all. They got a good football team. We're, we're, they did a hell of a job today coming back and winning. So we know that we'll be in for a big game. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.